Hello, very good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our uh, second webinar in eMobilog uh, series. This is Rahul Bagadia from uh, P Manifold, and I welcome you all from India. I hope you all are keeping safe and contributing to us uh, to come out faster out of this COVID situation. Uh, P Manifold, together with GIZ, is uh, conducting uh, eMobilog webinar series. The overall intention being to drive public transportation and its electrification uh, faster and uh, help with broader capacity building globally around this topic. Uh, today's second topic, we are focusing on eBus adoption and integration, lessons from Europe and the Middle East. We will be covering two uh, discussions. One around uh, uh, eBus initial planning and procurement of eBuses, where we will have a case study from uh, uh, Middle East. And second, around operations, charging, maintenance, how to drive end users adoption, and how do we build up uh, a business case for scale up of uh, eBuses. And that will be a case study coming from Europe, Madrid and Spain in uh, particular. We really hope that this learnings and best practices share across the country help all our professional community to drive eBus adoption uh, uh, in a stronger form. I quickly introduce our three speakers from today. Very experienced speaker. Uh, first is Shailendra Kaushik. Shailendra has 20 years experience uh, uh, in advisory, uh, primarily PPP projects uh, around transport. He is a transport planner and has worked across Asia, Europe, Africa, Middle East, Latin America, and Pacific. And he's co-founder of Cities Forum. Cities Forum is a catalyst organization working closely with cities, making cities uh, sustainability and smartness, including e-mobility. We have another co-founder of Cities Forum, Mr. Hemi Ruiz Hoiska. Uh, uh, he has played multiple roles uh, with cities, working directly in helping uh, smart and e-mobility integration. And he is co-founder with Cities Forum. We are very glad to have Mr. Rafael Navarro. Uh, he is Deputy Director, Transport Service, EMT Madrid. So this is a uh, municipal council uh, driven uh, transport authority in Madrid, uh, who is looking after bus transportation. And uh, they have integrated electric buses in their operation and going very systematic about it. So he and Rafael, uh, he and uh, uh, Mr. Hemi, will together uh, share their Madrid case study. Uh, so this is the plan for today. I request my other co-moderator, Laghu, who is transport uh, advisor with uh, GIZ India, uh, to take the discussions uh, forward. Laghu. Yeah, thank you very much, Rahul. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. And I hope uh, all of you are keeping yourself safe in this, uh, uh, on these scenarios. Uh, so I'll just start with a uh, brief uh, introduction for, uh, regarding the portfolio of GIZ in urban mobility. So uh, we have a project called Smart SUT, Sustainable Urban Transport, uh, which is funded by the BNZ uh, German government. And we are implementing it uh, 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 with Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs and Mahua as our political partner. Uh, basically, this project uh, is uh, involving uh, three states, which is uh, uh, Tamil Nadu, Kerala, and the Odisha. And uh, we are working with three smart cities currently with Bhubaneswar, Koyambutur, and Kochi, and uh, with a scalability of other cities like uh, Katak, Chennai, and Trivandrum. Uh, these are the cities which we are working with uh, under various sustainable mobility uh, areas. Uh, next slide, please. Next slide, please. Yeah, so as you can see, uh, under the sustainable mobility, we are working in, under various themes. Uh, start from bus transport, non-motorized transportation, institutional support to AMTA and municipal bodies and bus transport and, uh, uh, agencies. And the major focus is uh, 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 capacity building and the training. Uh, specific to the e-buses and the electric mobility, our focus is on the training and the capacity building. and uh, 
In this regard, we have initiated a uh, national level study uh, regarding the training need assessment uh, for the electric buses because we think that uh, a huge transition is happening in India from conventional diesel and CNG buses to the electric buses. And uh, the, it, 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 it gives us the uh, feeling that it will, it will create a, a huge requirement uh, in terms of new skill set requirement and the training requirement. So currently, uh, we, uh, we have done our uh, uh, stakeholder consultation, multiple stakeholder con consultation, including seven STUs regarding the assessment of training need. And soon, uh, we will come up with the outcome of this study and we'll share with all of you. And uh, uh, this is a very brief introduction of what we are doing uh, under the urban mobility domain. And uh, so as Rahul said, today we have uh, three speakers and two cities uh, with a very contrast uh, structures as far as procurement of e-buses is, is concerned. While Mr. Khorshik is going to talk about the private sector participation and uh, uh, for the procurement of the buses, while uh, the other model, which is in Madrid, is more of a outright purchase. And but at the same time, both are going to talk about uh, the, what are the prerequisite required before we go ahead uh, of the procurement of the e-buses, and uh, specifically the private sector participation, which is very much similar to uh, uh, what we are doing in India. And uh, we hope that we're going to uh, learn a lot uh, from the, out of these two cities. So without uh, uh, taking much of the time, I'll directly switch to our first speaker, Mr. Shailendra Gorsik. Shailendra. Yeah, thank you, Lagu. Thank you, Rahul, for introducing us. Uh, Rahul, can you arrange our presentation, the screen share for us, please? Sure. Uh... Yeah, can you show the slide? Yeah, it's all there, yeah. Hi, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. I think the people from different regions have joined this webinar and I hope that everyone is keeping safe. So I'll take a few minutes of your to introduce about Cities Forum, though Rahul has briefly introduced us. So Cities Forum is a young organization which was uh, launched in 2018 in University of Oxford Transport Studies Unit. Primarily, the objective is to provide strategic advice in the area of sustainable development for various cities. And uh, we also, in terms of uh, our work areas, we have presence across uh, six work areas, right from digital transformation to urban mobility, governance, finance, environment, social inclusion, and everything. Institutional and capacity building is one area where we work very intensively and we did conduct some training program in COP25 recent event which happened in Madrid and we conducted smart cities and future of mobility training program apart from that in world mobility show and in Latin America we did conduct some training program in electric buses. This is a project which we are doing right now in Europe for uh, working with six cities in Europe in developing the user-friendly charging infrastructure. This project has been conceived with 24 partners, with city authorities, research organization, funding partner, and technology partner, which basically the objective is to penetrate the electric vehicle into various cities. So this is briefly about uh, what we do. Then coming back to the city, you know, uh, I am today covering a city in the Middle Eastern region, with primarily I will focus on planning, design, and procurement aspect. So this city, in the year 2019 decided to implement a sustainable public transport project. The city size is roughly 1.5 million and it is forecasted to grow to 3 million, basically double in the next 20 years. The city already had a strategic transport model in place and we did develop a transit planning model using the strategic model, using the ME modeling software tool. And based on the travel demand forecast, Finally, the recommendation came that the city need not really a heavy mass transport system, but a light rail transit or a bus-based transportation system. Then the assessment was made for both the options using a multivariable analysis. And uh, finally, the recommended option which came is basically development of a bus-based rapid transit system. And rather than using conventional buses, use of the electric buses and the project was positioned as the electric mobility project 
considering uh, that the project include not only bus so this is the scope of the work the project include deployment of 300 electric buses with some of the buses are articulated buses apart from that the concessionaire also has to develop road infrastructure to operate these e buses on a dedicated right of way then third point was that apart from the electric buses the project also include implementation of 2000 electric chargers for cars and taxis throughout the city so this is also included as part of the electric mobility project and then the concession company also need to undertake the network design and optimize the full network so it's rather a you know comprehensive public transport model and uh, the concessioner has to operate the buses and also has to operate and maintain the asset which basically has been built as part of the project through a predefined kpis the entire system is to be implemented over a 18 month period of time and the successful consortium has to give two electric buses to the government authority on a pilot basis and finally the objective of the project is to reduce the greenhouse gases in urban areas and reduce the carbon emission as a result of the transport demand so why ert what exactly is the electric rapid transit so electric rapid transit is basically an lrt but it runs on tires so it's like articulated buses running on a dedicated corridor so it's the next generation brt you can call it bus rapid transit but with electric buses that is what the system is all about why we have chosen electric rapid transit because as per the travel demand forecast right now the city did not need any kind of you know heavy system so if you build a dedicated corridor and run the electric buses the system is upgradable to an lrt system in the next you know 10 years or whenever the demand reaches to that point and these buses has to compete with the private mode so dedicated corridor will provide an attractive you know uh, option for these users to switch from a private mode to a public transport mode and since we are using an emerging technology which basically result into carbon neutral transit so overall it will enhance the livability of the city so this is how why ert has been chosen another important aspect was the cost consideration so this table will give you an idea about the cost variation compared with the lrt system so this cost was worked out based on the 50 kilometer dedicated transit corridor if you see x is the cost per kilometer for an electric rapid transit vehicle so what is the cost for a light rail transit so the capex cost is 3.85 time multiplier compared to an electric rapid transit wherever interestingly if you see opex the light rail transit has less opex compared to the electric rapid transit so that shows that the bus based electric rapid transit project is a o and m intensive project rather than the capital intensive project so this is the aspect which city need to right from beginning put in their mind that what they are building the system is the maintenance oriented system so they should have a sufficient funding provision available for the maintenance of these buses throughout the project concession then coming to the environment side of it again ert is basically the best suited and overall if you see it's a 2.3x kind of multiplier compared to a lrt system it's flexible because it is running on buses comfort is almost the same because we will be using almost the similar kind of you know uh, scenario as in case of any modern rapid transit system and as i told you the flexibility in terms of operations is also there and this system can be upgraded to lrt as a later stage so that is the reason the city has chosen an electric rapid transit system and since the whole project not only include the buses it also include the charging stations for the private vehicle so it's a complicated project with various kind of you know uh, component it includes the buses the vehicle batteries charging infrastructure road network upgrade network planning operations so it's an integrated kind of project and as i told you it's an o and m driven project rather than capital cost driven so first thing the city has made a provision that for the duration of the concession there should be a budgetary provision for any shortfall in case there is a requirement for the maintenance work okay then the city also need a complete you know a comprehensive electric bus or e-mobility adoption strategy because the city currently has almost 1500 buses whereas in the first phase only 300 buses are to be electrified 
so there is an option to convert all buses on electric buses so the city need to be clear what exactly they want to do based on their studies and as i told you it is a systems thinking not just a bus it's not a bus and um, if you look at middle east we basically considered three aspect climate which is very hot over here the service delivery and the network so using these three metrics the system has been planned and one thing which basically we need to understand that the city need to plan it right to do it right because it include lot of complex you know uh, component which basically interlinks with each other so in that case the project development is very very important because the project was to be implemented on a public private partnership basis wherein the concession company has to design build finance operate and then transfer the system so a project development approach was kind of followed which has got five different steps so first step is the planning and design and the responsibility of planning and design was rest with the government and then second step is the market sensing so under the planning and design based on the high level feasibility study which include the transit corridor identification bus specification terminal par, par, uh, planning chargers and battery specification customer requirement then you test whatever is coming out that how the industry expectation and what is the industry benchmark you know whether we are not going overboard or underboard somewhere and at that stage you test your specific requirement with what other cities have done it and then try to see where should i fix my kpis for operations and other things then the third step is the contractual framework which include the procurement framework as well so you need to design a draft concession agreement or whatever you call it the contract agreement which on one side is a balance approach which basically satisfy the government objective with the industry expectation and in order to bridge that gap between government objective and industry expectation industry need to be engaged at each and every stage so a very very intensive industry engagement was required so that what you are offering to the market should have a take away for industries they should have you know interest the, the companies which will be bidding the project should have an interest and then after all these four or five activities then the final procurement process is to be finalized so this is the step which we have taken coming to planning and design the government need to be clear what exactly they wanted to achieve in case of this city the government was planning right now the bus transport share is almost 10% of the total travel demand they wanted to make it four time which is optimum but yes they wanted to create new routes they wanted to have dedicated corridor and they had set a target to reach 40% over the next 5 year and then second is improve the commercial viability of the project and all the upside as a result of uh, operator uh, you know innovation goes to the operator then third is basically industry interaction as i told you and fourth is the competitive market you have to make the tender very very competitive so that it is attracted for everyone then under planning and design we identified various routes location of depot charging station location bus stop spacing and everything at the concept level was done by the government and funded through the government budget and operator responsibility or the concessioner responsibility is to include the detailed design of the infrastructure because that is what he has to maintain over a 10 years period of time all risk and mitigations are identified early electric chargers in the project also include deployment of 2000 electric charging station so the location of these electric charging station was identified using a tool called click which basically you need to feed in the data city size number of paths and then location of various activities within the cities and then travel demand and using some sort of uh, algorithm it basically gives you the location of the electric charging infrastructure so this is a tool you know developed by a european company which basically would be used as part of this whole project then location of bus depot and terminal was identified and a detailed bus specification was written for both normal buses as well as for the uh, electric buses no, sorry both for normal buses as well as for the articulated buses and then uh, the depot and terminal locations was decentralized so the six depot has been identified and the infrastructure is to be developed alongside the e buses deployment so that the whole project is ready at the same time 
battery since this is the essence of the whole project so a detailed specification regarding what battery type provision of battery management system what you know how the air flow and heat management will happen so all these technical specification was written as part of the project customer is the key to the whole project so the customer experience as is centric while planning for the whole system as i told you the bus stop is located at every 200 meter because of the gulf and review of patronage and customer feedback was part of one of the kpis for the concession company we also looked into maintenance aspect like one is programmed to ensure which is basically that vehicles are always available and fit for purpose second is the ppm which is planned preventive maintenance which is scheduled maintenance at regular interval and in case you find any issue in the ppm then reliability centered maintenance to be done as per you know in the next service so all these maintenance guidelines were also written this is an interesting thing because market sensing is very very important and benchmarking if you look at it the this table shows that how if you privatize a bus operation or if you electrify a bus operations what is the unit cost reduction and how various kpis improve after the system is built so this uh, source of information is a transport economic study from one of the company and they did prove that once you privatize bus operations or once you electrify bus operation there is a substantial improvement in terms of the service level delivery and reduction in the operating cost so using those numbers which are basically there the city has to see that where they would want to fix and considering all those things the recommended business model has been finalized which basically says that the bus operations need to be outsourced the competition would be a controlled competition through a competitive tendering process funding model is a gross cost plus incentive model contract bundling was done so as per the six depot the contracts are bundled out and no operator to hold more than two contracts the duration is eight year plus the renewal option provision was there and the role of transport authority which currently running the buses would transform from an operator to a regulatory or a planning organization then there are certain procurement issues and contractual issues which is very very important in a ppp project which these authority need to identify they need to know what they are offering to the market what is the procurement approach what is the fleet implementation approach and then how to achieve a level playing field considering the staff and fleet and depot they need to engage with the market and all those kind of things and in contractual issues which is basically part of the concession you need to define what is the payment model how the incentive and penalties using various kpis is to be made end of term arrangement how the transition will happen when the concession is finished then termination right and default and cure is very very important because public transport is a service project in case of any default by either a concession company you know the buses should not stop so there should be a proper provision of cure and taking over the project by the government what kind of security is you know because all these project is to be implemented using a project spv so project spv is a new company so you need to have some parent company guarantee which basically ensure that in case spv suffers either financially then the parent company will come to the rescue and then since the project is to be funding through a private finance basis using debt so there is should be a provision of step in right for the lenders insurance performance bond so it's a detail you know you need to plan it right as i told you to do it right so all these aspects are done as part of this whole project so uh, you also need to understand that there is no single solution you need to consider the local consideration it is not like that that madrid has done this way or adelaide has done this way so we should also do that way you need to understand what is the local consideration what kind of companies would be interesting what is the capability of those companies and accordingly design the contract this is a very important industry engagement because ultimately ppp is a public private partnership and private sector it is not that something you know government thing that i should give or transfer all my risks to private sector no you need to consider what the private sector expectation is and the requirement is and then set the project right so this is a slide you know if you look at these graphs 
the first table shows first graph shows that the bus timetable which we basically planned initially that all the bus schedule you know the entire route throughout the day should be finished in 55 minutes and these uh, lines red green line if you see this is the average reality you know what is average in terms of compared to the actual schedule and you see that more or less you know everywhere the average is above the scheduled time but if you tweak in a manner considering the network that in peak time you know the time to complete the trip is more than the non peak time and you define that the time to complete the route for peak and non peak time varies and then look at the actual number in terms of the green line so it basically matches and this is what you call it the realistic kpis you don't have to be very very idealistic while framing the kpis those are realistic kpis so this this is the suggestion which came as part of the industry engagement same for payment mechanism because you know this city is traditionally the buses are operating by the government department and as the first privatization initiative project the operator was not willing to collect the fare box revenue risk because on the other side the government has planned to increase you know the the patronage on public transport by many multiple in five five years period of time so the fare box revenue should rest with the government and rather the monthly fee to be paid by the transport department so that is the kind of you know feedback came from the market initially government was willing that all fare box revenue risk to be taken care by the developer or the concession company or the operator so all these kpis in terms of payment mechanism operations we discussed in advance with the market and took their feedback initially like for example increase patronage incentive so government has come out over there so they say if there is a natural growth of patronage or then operator should not get benefit out of it operator should be benefited if the patronage growth is because of operator led initiative so this the, the suggestion from the government which the industry has accepted then roles and responsibility because it is a ppp project so there are different tasks and different authority and operator they are responsible for these different tasks like as i told you concept design and feasibility so all initial work is the authority responsibility and then dis design engineering financing deployment of buses operations and maintenance is operator responsibility and performance monitoring is again government responsibility apart from payment of monthly fee contract variation is a joint responsibility so these are some of the you know uh, roles and responsibility and these details are further subdivided into 52 activities and using those 52 activities the performance indicators were also finalized using a balanced scorecard approach because traditionally we see that public transport project the kpis are either related to customer satisfaction or, or you know the the technical specification related to the bus operations so rather we used the balanced scorecard approach which basically balances the financial and the operational operational uh, aspect and then come out with a detailed assessment so under the balanced scorecard we have six key success dimension under growth and learning what is the patronage growth customer under customer you have all kpis related to operations internal process asset utilization vehicle reliability safety and security like freedom from accident freedom from crime financial efficiency in terms of reporting to government and environment in terms of reduction of vehicle emissions so all these kpis then further subdivided and each kpis were given a weightage and this weightage can change over time you know and every year there is a review to change those weightage and this is how the overall kpi score composite score was kind of worked out tender evaluation this is another thing which basically the government need to do it right how the tender will need to be evaluated what we are going to pay to the authority to the concession company or the concession company has to pay to government so in this project the consortium need to be led by a bus operator and tender evaluation is based on the two financial indicator one is the monthly leasing cost per bus as the 300 new electric buses are being procured so the concession company need to give the monthly leasing cost per bus and secondly monthly o and m cost per kilometer so these two are the 
indicator which basically being used under the tender evaluation criteria another thing used looking at uh, the various cities uh, indicators and the local cost it was also finalized that the monthly o&m cost per kilometer should not exceed the 75% of the current o&m cost so this is the limit which was defined and there is a performance in incentive mechanism also built in the contract that if operator led initiative if there are kpis which basically they excel as per the benchmark index then operator would be given an incentive project schedule this is very important we had almost a year project development phase and then six month of uh, phase for financial closure doing detail engineering 18 month implementation and eight and a half year operations and maintenance so planning is very important as i told you likely outcome you know finally the project once it get completed uh, the whole city network will change through this green mode of transportation which will result into reduction of emission in terms of learning outcome the whole process because i was looking we were discussing with the giz about the complex and challenges which indian cities are facing so one thing which basically came out with this that the early commencement of pretender activities is required you need to allow sufficient time for planning project planning in this case we had one year time but if you desire to you know contract this one year to three months or six months then because if the planning phase is not right you will not have a good implementation if the implementation is not correct you will have issues with the operations and maintenance so you need to plan it right to do it right industry engagement is again you know very important where you need to discuss all risk allocation and contract design so that there is no contract departure later on then time of transition is very important because right now the buses are being run by government so there is a transition time and during the transition time the kpis need to be you know the government need to be little bit flexible with these kpis data availability is again an important aspect because if there is a lack of information the risk is there and then performance regime and kpis should have significant risk reward consequences and um, if there is an event beyond operator control so don't punish him that is again a learning and create realistic timeline both for transition and contract obligation so this is what the learning outcome as part of this whole project you know i could summarize so this is what about my presentation uh, so thank you very much Alan. uh, uh I guess I would say very, very unique structure which you are following in this city and uh, probably I've never seen such kind of a comprehensive uh, packaging, including the buses and the road infrastructure and that is on PPP. Yeah, let's see how will it go. And uh, yeah. so before we uh, apply from uh, Middle East to Madrid, uh, we have a small poll uh, uh, for the audience. And uh, Rahul, how much time do we have for this? I think like let's take quick uh, 15 seconds for people to read and respond. Uh, they have to select uh, one of their most preferred thing which they believe uh, will go for contracting. So what feasible options for procuring electric buses? There are five options uh, laid down. Yeah, so it's like outright purchase by the transport authority and uh, all next four are variants of private sector participation and which challenger also focus so i think audience needs to find out based on the risk associated with the electric buses uh, which is the most uh, they think that this is the most visible one to go ahead so we have about 15 seconds now So these are the results uh, uh, team. So here I think uh, GCC contract uh, including charging and transport authority paying separately for electricity that has received uh, most number of uh, 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 responses 34% followed by what uh, Shailendra presented uh, uh, for Middle East case study which is lease plus OPEX 
and transport authority pay separately for electricity the lowest option has been received uh, by outright purchase by transport agency and also the net cost contract model so interesting results i think we will continue in fact uh, the next uh, presentation uh, is uh, uh, by hemi and rafael who will present a madrid case study and how using the first option uh, they have been able to drive uh, success uh, with uh, better planning so over to you uh, hemi hello <clears throat> good uh, good afternoon everyone I, I'm honored and I'm delighted for having been invited to, to share my insights about the, the overall status of uh, EBAS uh, market in, in Europe and, and also to talk about the, the case, a specific case of Madrid. Uh, I'm going to start uh, explaining you the framework, the policy framework in the Euro European Commission uh, about uh, shifting to, to clean vehicles in terms of uh, uh, buses. Um, the, the European Commission, the European Union, has set a target of, of at least 45% of uh, newly registered, sorry, uh, newly registered uh, buses uh, equipped with alternative power chains. Uh, it includes not only electric but also uh, GNC, for for instance. Um, this is. It might it might seem an, an ambitious um, uh, target, but it depends on the on the context, on the on the countries and cities. Because in case of medium-sized cities, this is a, a, a quite ambitious target. But you'll see in my in the, in the comment slides that for large uh, cities, large European cities, this is uh, not enough. They are uh, being way more ambitious and most of them are half already committed to to deliver 100% fully electric buses um, in the uh, municipal network i mean so, we are not seeing your presentation can you please uh, uh, accept a screen share ah okay sorry sorry can you okay. see it now yes yes Amy. thank you okay yeah basically i was um I was explaining first of all the 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 status, the policy status of the in in the European Union regarding um, uh, clean uh, means of transport uh, in uh, public uh, transport and uh, in the case of of buses. So um, now I want to give you some uh, quick um, key figures about the 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 adoption of electric buses fleets in in Europe. Uh, during the last year, the percentage of uh, electric buses registered uh, on average was 12%. Um, yeah, and you know that China is leading this market, um, but at, at present we have in, in Europe 4,000 electric buses. But the good thing is that the, these, uh, these, uh, the ratio, this, this share is going to, to go to rise up to 20% during this year in 2020 according to the, the forecast of uh, of the UITP. So this, um, this market is, is going to grow considerably uh, during the, the coming years, and it, it, this is a clear trend. And I think this is a, sorry. Yeah, this is a, an interesting slide because it, it is going to help us to understand um, how the, the different countries and, and cities in Europe are um, evolving or um, um, are making progresses in, in terms of shifting to electric, uh, electric buses fleets. We have some uh, interesting examples. Uh, you can see here medium-sized cities like Groningen in the Netherlands that has already deployed 160 electric buses you can see also uh, the case of Amsterdam in the Netherlands. The, they are operating 100 electric buses uh, between the, the airport, the Schiphol airport, and the, the city center. Of course, you have uh, large cities, um, uh, unfortunately, not, Euro not Euro uh, European cities anymore, like London, that uh, uh, have uh, a, really, a really ambitious uh, strategy and plans to to shift uh, to shift into uh, electric buses fleets 
and uh, two more cases, the case of Madrid that we are, are going to focus on later on, uh, where we can find electric, uh, 83 electric buses, uh, some of them to be deployed during, during this year. And um, the most interesting thing is the plans that they have, what they've, uh, what they're thinking about. They, they, they've already committed to deliver 50 electric buses per year during the coming years. So um, I would say they are at the front, uh, at the front they are the front runners of um, uh, electric uh, bus uh, electrification of the uh, bus public uh, transport network uh, in the south of Europe. And we have a, a quite shocking case. This is the case of Paris. They've already awarded a framework uh, contract for delivering uh, or purchasing 800 electric buses. It's the biggest, the largest uh, contract in Europe regarding uh, electric buses. And they've, uh, they are going to, to have 150 electric buses uh, operating during this year. And uh, they've pledged, they've committed to have in, in 2025, uh, a fully electrified um, uh, network, bus network. In the city. We have here uh, another interesting uh, slide. I'm going to, um, to explain it uh, quickly. We have here the, the forecast of uh, regarding um, how the, the uh, electric bus fleets are going to evolve in, in uh, globally, not only in Europe, but also in China and the US and, and uh, in the rest of the world. As you see, according to the U UITP um, forecast, uh, in Europe and in India, um, probably they, they are going to, to be the, the two regions where, where the, the, the electrification of public bus network is, is going to be stronger. And uh, you have also, and in this small, this small uh, graph on, on top uh, left of, the, of this slide, where you can see how is the uh, electric bus share of sales at present? And uh, another forecast uh, coming from Bloomberg Net, where they uh, they've stated that the the at present the percentage of uh, electric buses uh, sales in in Europe is fifty percent. We are talking about an, an, an average of the, the public tender processes that there are uh, currently uh, being delivered. And of course, this, this percentage is going to, to grow up to 80% uh, during the, the coming uh, 20 next years. Okay. Uh, can you hear me? Can yes, you hear uh, me? Okay. Yes, yes, please continue. Now I'm I'm moving I'm moving directly to the case of uh, Madrid. I think uh, these these figures I'm going are going to give you a, a quick overview about uh, the the relevance of uh, of the the, the public uh, transport network. That is, it is. Uh, I, I'm going to show you here the, the figures, the key figures uh, coming from the EMT, the Municipal Transport Company of the City of Madrid, because they are uh, managing and operating 211 lines of, of, of buses with a total network of uh, 3,800 uh, 3, uh, kilometers. They have more than 2,000 buses. 86% 80, of, of this uh, this fleet uh, are green uh, are using uh, green technology or uh, basically GNC on uh, on electric buses. Uh, they have at present they have 83 electric buses, but as as I mentioned before, they've committed to uh, increase that amount by 50 um, 50 more buses per year. They have a budget of um, nearly 800 million euros um and i i want to highlight here that they they are they are already uh managing directly managing and operating the the electric share uh bicycle system of the city with more than two 2000 electric bikes 
So they are not all they are not only operating the the bus network, but also the the electric share um, system of of Madrid. Of course, they are involved in international projects, also as a, a providing consultancy services. Um, and then yeah, they are very active in terms of participating in European fund funded projects as well. Okay, next. Um, I'm bringing this slide just for, for your um, quick review in case you have time. This is a, a link where you can uh, um, you can consult uh, the the uh, in, in real time how the the electric bus network is performing and, and functioning in Madrid. Here you have the, uh, the, the the route of the one of these the, the two electric fully fully electric lines that are operating in Madrid. And if you have time, I'll I'll suggest you to to check it out. Well, um, here here I have the the structure of how the public transport is um, uh, is currently being uh, is operating in, in Madrid. This is important because um, below you have the Madrid urban buses, the EMT, uh, where we are going to to focus later on but it's important because it gives it gives us an, an idea of how the public the electric uh, bus fleet is being funded basically it had the money comes from the regional transport consortium of madrid that uh is uh at the same time is it's it's getting the the, the funding from the the re regional government and also from the city from the city of Madrid, in the case of Madrid, of the different municipalities in the Madrid region. And now it's turned to, to Rafael, Rafael Orihuela, the Deputy Director of the Transportation Department of the e EMT Madrid. And he's going to, to go further in terms of explaining you in detail how the, the, uh, the electric bus fleet is operating and what, what's what's the the experience uh, that they've had during the the process of uh, of shifting to to uh, e-mobility? So, Rafael, can you hear me? Yes, yes, I hear you. I I, I have to activate the the microphone. Uh, okay. Hello, everybody. Good morning from Spain. Uh, good evening. Uh, I hope uh, you are very well, well and uh, I want to give you uh, all my recognition for accepting our intervention here from EMT. Well, let's start. Um, we have uh, 15 fully electric standard buses uh, in use from the uh, 2018. So, they use uh, several batteries, but these several batteries that they, they were, were the only available in this year are not good batteries. Uh, now we are starting to put in exploitation a similar type of buses, but with lithium batteries. You know? uh, these type of buses are similar to our buses, to our GNC or diesel buses. And they useful to do kilometers and uh, to do 200, 240 kilometers. But these several batteries of these several buses, they only um, they only do 140, 160 kilometers. It depends on the on the line. You know? So our experience so far is related to non satisfying electric buses you know you we have to charge these buses or between shifts or we have to adapt these buses to a special shift a special short shifts to to bear uh, the, the kilometers they have to do um our experience with the new buses these buses with new batteries is satisfied uh, we are satisfied with them because they they can do 240, 260, 230 uh, kilometers. So uh, for us, these new buses 
will be similar to our TNC or Excel buses. The other type of buses we have is uh, this uh, model Volta Rampini. You can hear, you can see the, sorry, I have to do this. Thank you. Um, we have uh, this model Volta Rampini that is uh, an Italian bus. Uh, they have lithium batteries, 100 kilowatts, and they are dedicated to a short line. It's a, a line that is that drives through the city, to the old city, to the old part of the city, very narrow streets, uh, tourism, uh, old people, and so on. And it's, a, it's a line very easy, as you, uh, you can see. Um, these buses usually can cope with the shift, usually. But two of them are uh, two of the shifts uh, require two buses. We don't have a opportunity chart where we change the bus, and the bus with the but this discharge battery goes to the depot to to be recharged to the next day. We are now uh, building a small, a very small facility in the city in the city to recharge these buses, uh, these two buses in the city, not in the depot. Um, please, next next slide. Okay, Anyone? yes. Oh, thank you. Uh, evolution, uh, I, I said before, we have now 20 fully electric buses for Nidisa with uh, lithium batteries, uh, more kilowatts, you can see there, 360 kilowatts. Uh, less time to be charged, and we are starting also with uh, another uh, 15 uh, fully electric standard buses from BYD. Uh, we, we, uh, we have not the photograph because the, the buses are, are coming, but uh, this type of buses, uh, it is a, and BYD, are very powerful. Uh, we have not experienced uh, with uh, of more than two months with them, but the experience is very very good. BYDs uh, have not started the uh, service, the standard service. We are uh, we have uh, 15 buses on our depot, and we are testing before putting them on on service. Um, as Jaime said, uh, our plans our plans is to buy 50 buses a year. Uh, and the plan is by 2024, 20, 2028, 20, it depends on the, the economical chances, uh, to have um, in relation uh, to 2024, 20, uh, 600 buses. All this. Um, this was the plan, but you know that with this situation we have with the virus, um, economic plans have changed a lot, uh, or, or will, will really change a lot. So we need perhaps to replan uh, our our challenge. Perhaps it can be less buses, or to buy less GNC buses to have more money to buy uh, electric buses. You know? um, these um, these buses, uh, these are um, BYD. We can see. Uh, with our share experience that belong to a new generation of buses. I think this, these buses is, are uh, more or less the same as, as a diesel bus, as I said in the previous slide. Please, next slide, I mean. Okay. Well, we have uh, put uh, two zero emissions and zero cost uh, no zero cost, zero, the, the, the passengers, is free for the passengers. Uh, zero emissions, um, one of them is line 001, Atocha uh, Renfe Moncloa, and the other 002, Porta Tolego Um They have 18 buses, 10 electric for, 10 buses for the line one, and eight for the line two. They were put on service, uh, uh, 
two months ago. So two months, uh, one month. If you put, you see the the, the data. Uh, the date is here, uh, March 3rd, uh, 3rd, 3rd March, but we started with uh, tests before. Um, these lines with new type of buses, as I said to you, the new generation buses, uh, don't, can cope with the daily kilometers. We charge the buses every night and they spend all day uh, giving service to our passengers. And at the end of the day, they come back to the depot and usually takes three hours and a half, four hours to be charged, to, full, to be fully charged for the next day. So they operate in the same way as a diesel bus or a DNC bus. So uh, the, the, for EMT, was very important when we decided to, to, to get new buses, new electric buses, not to adapt the shifts, not to adapt the, our operation, but to get buses that uh, can comply with our, with our requirements. Uh, the previous experience with lethal buses with several batteries was very disappointing. Uh, we have to do, we have to do uh, many changes, many adaptations uh, of our way we work, and we're already anti-economical. Um, let's let's put the next uh, slide. Well, the, the scheme, the, the framework we we operate the, the electric buses. The electric buses is, is this. Um, we have. Fleet providers, BYD, Ethar. Uh, we, we have now a, a, an open tender with more grants, Teuton, uh, uh, next, next, next tender uh, perhaps can include MAN from Germany. So different providers. They only provide the bus, the chargers, give us training to do the maintenance, and do the maintenance during the warranty period to do the, the to, to solve the warranty problems. From the start, we maintain made, made the fully maintenance of the buses. So so uh, we don't have any leasings, any special contracts or special framework to for for the supplier to do anything more than supply the bus. We have the uh, energy provider uh, with a Spanish company, uh, and they supply the, the electricity. We are trying now, to, because we are, we are in the challenge to, to have uh, 100, 150, 200 buses, uh, we, we are now uh, negotiating with these companies to have supply contracts with special prices because because in the future and um, we have a, uh, we have um, a depot with 300 or 400 buses we will need uh, 20 25 28 megawatts uh, every of consume every day so they have they have to, to they need to give us good prices uh, because also these good prices is a part of the benefit from in relation with GNC buses. MEMT, uh, you can see there, operates the bus, operates the lines, do the maintenance, as I said, do the training with the, the help of provider. And after that, uh, we do more training. Uh, you know, uh, we have uh, many experience in maintenance maintaining buses and sometimes uh, the brands comes to ENT to have training because uh, the, our experience uh, maintaining uh, maintaining the the the, the, mobile, the the buses is great is better than the, the experience they have and after that we do the installation of the of the chargers by the energy 
is is easy. We we have we prefer a scheme we we have where we have all the control. Next slide, please. Well, this is a, a slide to to show you how is the scheme, the economical scheme of the whole system. Uh, the city council, Madrid, uh, is our, the owner of our company, but they don't plan the transport. We have a regional transport authority, it's called Consorcio, Consorcio Transporte, you can see in red, um, that manages the whole transport in the region of Madrid, that manages all the, um, the money that uh, comes from the transport in relation um, to the, the fares and um, do the, how can I explain? <laughs> They, uh, they, they monitor monitor of the monitor, yes, monitor they monitor the how we can we we do the the work every day not only us uh, all the all the operators in Madrid we we are public operators but we have private operators also and they do the the, the finance and the tariff compensation to every operator in relation to kilometers or in relation to passengers. After that, we uh, you can see MT Madrid. The, we are the e bus uh, operators. We do the maintenance. We belong to the city of Madrid, but in this scheme, we only act as an operator. You know, uh, because city of Madrid, the the the, the only uh, they only give money to the regional transport authority to support the uh, operation of the whole public transport in Madrid, including ENT. And the last one is the, the OM, the, the provider, that in this case, ESR, BYD, that is only the flight, the fleet provider, and and they they have the, the buses paid by, by EMT because Consorcio Transporte, the regional authority, gives money to EMT to pay the to, to pay these buses. Yes, uh, Consorcio not only pays the passengers, not only pay the kilometers, they, they pay the, the investments. You know? So this is the scheme. The, 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 the main actor here is Consorcio, the regional transport authority. Next slide. Thank you. So this is a conclusion and a resume. to resume. The role, the main role of Madrid uh, is to give the transport, to act, to act as operator, public operator, and to buy the bus, the buses, the vehicles in, in an open track. The maintenance is made um, by MT with the only help of the initial training of the provider. The provider, the OM, in this case, is a, was awarded uh, with the last contracts. Uh, the first one was not very successful, but the second one, we hope uh, we, we have a good speed with the new generation buses. Uh, EMT of Madrid has separate contracts to pay electricity, and, and the, as I explained in the final scheme, ENT received funding from the regional consortium, the, the regional transport authority, in relation to kilometers, to passengers, and some KPIs, uh, I forgot, some KPIs, and they support our, our investments. Next slide, please. Let's talk about the the advantages and limitations. Um, the main problem is autonomy. With the new generation of electric buses, our experience, our, our short experience is 
that autonomy now is not a problem. The other uh, limitation till now was the, the operation to the charge the batteries. Uh, in the past, with the first generation of buses was very slow, eight hours, more or less. But now uh, the new buses, uh, they only need three hours and a half. Infrastructures is uh, another problem because mm, the problem is that we don't have enterprises with previous experience installing 20 megawatts um, facilities to charge 300, 400 buses. So now we are uh, exploring with some com electric companies to do that. Uh, and the other problem is that when, they have, when you have the project, you have the solution, uh, the problem is to, to find the 20 megawatts. So in the big cities, uh, only in few few locations, you have big cables, big wires, big wires to obtain so big uh, power capacity. So you have to, to tend to, to have the, the wire from these points, these locations to the depots. Costs uh, is another problem because uh, Electric buses are very expensive. We hope uh, with the savings in, en in energy to compensate this extra cost, but we are we have some fear in relation with batteries. Batteries are guaranteed to for eight years. Uh, the end of the eight the eighth year, uh, they the provider guarantees you a minimum capacity of. 70% to this battery, but, but uh, nobody had experience with that. Uh, and the problem is if you have to change the, you need to change the batteries, but these are more than, more than half the cost of the bus. And the other one is uh, the training uh, of your human resources in the depots to repair these buses. You have uh, to change, uh, to, to do, you need to do a, a cultural change from maintaining GNC buses, official buses, to maintain uh, an electric bus. Please, Jaime, next slide. Thanks. We don't have any special regulation in Spain for, we don't have any special norm or a special legal text that regulates the electric charge of the bus, but this is safety. So we, have, we, are, we are living the same days we live when we installed the uh, goods and service, uh, nest, the, the first uh, GNC buses. We are discovering new things in the administrations. As I, as I said, uh, medium depot with 300 buses needs its 20 megawatts of uh, power, electric power, using, this is very important, using a smart charging. And this smart charging depends on of the hour you have the bus free to charge, because uh, at night you need the buses also to do maintenance. So it's very important to, to cope with the different tasks you need to do with bus. The electrical technology uh, requires, as I said, with the human resources, a special training because you are cooking, we are dealing with very high voltages, 300, plus, 300 uh, volts, and the, you have a problem that the, operate, the operator, the people cannot see the electricity. So we have some fear with uh, so an accident. For, uh, and um, the capacity of manufacturing uh, electric, electric buses in Europe is very, very low. So uh, in our uh, two first tenders, we only have uh, an European contractor, that is Ibiza, Spanish contractor, because the usual German contractors, German OEMs, suppliers, they don't have, a, they didn't have a 
electric bus ready to to go for us for us uh, because they were betting for uh, opportunity to charge buses next slide please Rafael and uh, Hemi, may I request you to uh, try to complete in next uh, three, four minutes? Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, let's go. Let's go to the. This is the, the ciphers or the figures of for test. This you can see after. Uh, you can see the graphics here in relation with the cost by 100 uh, kilometers. The most cheap, cheaper one is the electric bus, yeah, 20 hours, 100 kilometers in relation with 54 to diesel, and the emissions, uh, the advantage is clear. And please go to the next slide. Uh, next one. Yes, Dipo, uh, the first, the first, uh, the, you can see there, uh, the LIPA, new, is the new bus depot, 100% low emission fleet with uh, fully electric buses, uh, 20 megawatts uh, and full electric with special um, facilities for electric, full, uh, electric uh, buses. The parking capacity will have uh, the 333, and we think we, we will be the first full electric uh, depot in Europe of this size. Because uh, in France, uh, in Paris, has full electric. We have full electric uh, depots, but uh, smaller ones. And the conclusions. The next one. Sorry. Yes. Um, is the best solution? Yes, it's the best solution. Is mature? Is ready? Yes, at this moment, not in the past. But no one has a long-term experience in relation with the with the buses, the, how they are going to to behave. It requires very high electricity power, and this is difficult to obtain in cities because we have to pay much money to have the wire, to have the, the, the electric station, to have the, the electricity, the power. And it's very important to have, at least in Europe, at least in Spain, a great collaboration with a administration to have papers and permissions fast, and electric uh, companies to, to obtain the, the power uh, also in a fast place. Um, and no more, no more things. This is all. Sorry for the time, but I lost my watch. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Hemi, and also Rafael. Uh, very, very uh, important insights uh, and uh, details that you were able to share. I have a question, uh, uh, Rafael. Uh, I think it, yours is very uh, unique uh, operations where uh, uh, it's a full uh, supply contract and you are maintaining uh, it all uh, by yourself. Yeah. Uh, how has been the experience uh, from two points, like uh, what kind of trainings uh, really helped uh, the transfer of knowledge from the uh, OEMs bus providers to your team uh, and how effective has that been? And second, like there are a lot of questions because a lot of other STUs are still kind of continue to use OEM uh, services for doing maintenance and not the knowledge. I, I lost your the voice. Lost. Very organized fashion. And that yes. remains a continued dependence on that. So how you have solved this problem? And of course, you have solved it. But I think for audience, it will be very interesting to uh, understand a little elaboration there. Yes. Yes. Uh, uh, can you repeat the, the, the second question? Because I, I lost the, the audio. Uh, sure, sure. I asked uh, one question like, uh, how has been the training? How have you organized training from yeah. OEMs to your team? Uh, one yeah. question. 
and second like uh, by doing this maintenance internal how much cost optimization in maintenance of electric buses when you compare to the diesel buses oh great great um the, man, uh, the maintenance training uh, was uh, the way we work in, in relation with training uh, usually providers train trainers train out trainers um, usually takes one week for the first uh, first step maintenance and two weeks for the two or three steps uh, maintenance after that these trainers train our our people um, the maintenance of the electric buses is easier, is much easier, but is uh, you have to think, uh, to take in account uh, this uh, more dangerous. So uh, our main problem with training and with maintenance is to to transmit how how important is safety in electric maintenance, no? because. Uh, uh, our people is very confident uh, because it's accustomed to diesel and electric buses, uh, 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 diesel and CNG buses. Um, with electric buses, uh, they they don't perceive the, the danger. Uh, this the maintenance is much easier and much cheaper. Uh, we don't have uh, exact figures, but perhaps uh, in relation with in relation with with the electric parts of the bus, perhaps uh, 90 90 percent at the moment. You, it's a, this is a very important moment now because we have very new electric buses. They are very new. Uh, the only problem that we in relation with maintenance was uh, with batteries. Uh, the, the first uh, buses, Zebra batteries, were were are very bad. Now we are um, doing a, a program to ex exchange these all the uh, several batteries by new lithium batteries, and we have to do a special application. But the only problem uh, has been in relation with batteries. Uh, some one, no, two of the batteries of the packs, battery packs, uh, caught, were caught on fire. Uh, and the others in five, no, eight batteries, eight packs of batteries were out of order. They, they, they lose their energy, their capacity, and we lose these, we lose these packs. Um, fortunately, uh, the, the, man, the battery packs were uh, under a warranty, uh, were free, they, they exchanged for a new one. But uh, this is because uh, we don't want more zebra batteries. In relation with with lithium batteries, uh, we have no problem. We have no problem at the, at the moment, but we are we are starting the, the use. So we have uh, an experience, a life experience of, of three three months. I don't know. Around, if I... around batteries, Rafael, uh, uh, there is one question. Like uh, coming from the experiences, what Lagu was stating from the seven STUs that uh, we are jointly conducting an assessment of electric buses. We have seen that uh, the actual range that uh, the uh, STU is getting from electric bus, in many of the cases, it is almost 50% uh, of the quoted uh, technical range uh, from the OEM. In such cases, uh, do you believe that some kind of uh, city-specific drive testing of battery performance uh, uh, should be undertaken. Uh, and I think after your experience around uh, batteries, performance and its degradation, I would also like to hear from Shailendra how this risk can be curtailed uh, or uh, can be rightly uh, planned uh, 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 under contracting Shailendra. So first, Rafael, if you can share your thoughts on uh, how to handle uh, battery performance uh, and its uh, range if it is not coming as expected uh, or as quoted by the OEMs. Well, um, when we buy the, the, the buses uh, in the, the public tender, we put some, we put a special penalties 
for for the battery for the battery packs. Uh, these special penalties uh, are related to the capacity through the time, are related in in the the, the performance uh, in this time, uh, are in relation also with uh, the the life, not 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 the capacity the the degradation in relation with the batteries have to survive at least uh, uh, five years in the first tender and eight years in the second tender. So this warranty is the same for the capacity and the life of the battery can have to survive eight years um, and have to survive also with at least 70% of the capacity at the eighth year. If they don't comply with that, uh, the, the penalty is they have to exchange the, the battery packs that don't comply with they are dead or they they don't comply with the 70 cap, uh, percent of capacity. We have a special facility and special circuit in our one of our depots that is very big, and we uh, we check when we buy the buses, we do the tender when we receive the, the, the prototypes previously to, to, to give the tender, uh, we check the prototypes in a special circuit that is uh, measured with uh, uh, bus stops, with uh, special uh, loads. We load the, the bus also with uh, some ballast. Um, we check the prototypes. And after that, when we receive the buses, we check the, the final buses that we are going to receive unit by unit to check the capacity. In the future, when we uh, receive, we do we will do great greater tenders, more buses. We'll check uh, not all the buses, but a little part of them to to assess that the capacity or the performance of the battery corresponds to the text of the offer can i am is this answer good for you covers of the things i don't I know see i have lose something sure uh, uh, i think shailendra if you can also share your viewpoint uh, you talked about an interesting industry engagement and i think especially in india this problem uh, of uh, uh, some technical uh, uh, KWH battery pack provide uh, 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 range, and that too is a mix of all different parameters. Right? Like it's uh, not only just battery, but it's about the loading, temperature, air conditioning, road condition. So anything that uh, you have kind of looked into from the contracting side? Yeah, Rahul. Uh, thanks. Thanks for the question. In this current project where we are working on, what we have made the provision of, uh, you know, supplying two prototype unit of buses, what the winning consortium will be operating. So immediately on signing of letter of intent, the consortium has to give two prototype buses with exact what they have, you know, committed as part of the contract. And these buses will be running over a period of time until the time the infrastructure is ready and their performance whether it is in terms of you know bus performance or battery performance will be closely monitored and then come out that whatever they are committing whether it is giving the same result or do we need to you know look for some better alternative or tweak the kpis so this is a provision which we have made and as rafael said the same thing they are also you know before buying the buses they are also making a provision of prototype so prototyping is something which you know, these cities need to work in India also that before actual rolling out, you need to test the system. Thank you, Shailendra. I think in... Uh, sorry, uh, can I add something? Uh, but I think... Uh, yeah, sure, uh, Rafael. It's, uh, it's only, I, I forgot. Um, in relation with air condition, um, this X EAC system, Usually, um, autonomy get uh, reduced in more or less 20%. 20%. So, 
So we, we make the tests of autonomy without air conditioning. This is the only yeah, thing are, was... The air condition is a big uh, energy guzzler for electric buses. Uh, yeah. yeah, same for Middle East also, you know, same for Middle East because air condition is what it is required. So th there were some other state, you know, cities, not this city, but they were also done the piloting of the electric buses wherein the operator had committed that the buses will operate at a particular temperature but it was you know after a point of time it was not running properly as per the committed you know so then they have to improve upon the whole thing so yes air conditioning is very important while you know finalizing the specification and that is a challenge also in terms of electric buses so one of the suggestion which came from the industry is that rather than using complete electric buses why can't we have in hybrid buses you know because you know peak summer happens about a month or two months in in the middle east so we could have a provision of the you know some hybrid buses and some fully electric buses so that is yes that is a challenge you need to learn as more and more electric vehicle electric buses coming you need to learn and adopt with, because there is no something ideal which we can achieve in the first go that is right shalendra lagu you have uh, questions please yeah, thank you, Rob. Uh, so I have a couple of questions, two questions uh, from uh, uh, Shalendra. Yeah. So uh, mm -hmm. one of the interesting uh, aspect of your uh, project planning is the, uh, which is you said as a is kind of a BRT. Okay, you call it as a ERT, and which has a uh, I understand which is quite similar to uh, uh, many of the BRT systems uh, across the globe, where you are providing an exclusive roadway for the buses and which is not mixing with the other traffic this is an interesting aspect and how do you see that where exactly indian cities are need to learn uh, from this particular aspect especially i'm talking about the big cities in india where the existing speeds of the buses commercial speeds of the buses are as low as less than 10 kmph so it means that if you have uh, electric buses and we are anyway uh, have those kind of a uh, the range anxiety as far as uh, our batteries are concerned and with this kind of congestion uh, buses are operating so a significant amount of energy might go into the congestion rather than completing the schedule operation so how do you see the entire things uh, as far as uh, this exclusivity concern and at the same time because you are from india you have worked so much and we are kind of after so many uh, 10 11 uh, brt experience we are BRT allergy, not now. Okay, so how do you see this? Yeah, Lagu, it's a, it's a good question. You know, because in this city also, when we were finalizing the route wherein the electric buses will ply, this issue was basically been taken care of. That in case of congestion area where you know running electric buses will be kind of a challenge. So then. As you see in my presentation, I said under the concept planning stage, we had identified the routes where the electric buses will run. Other routes where, you know, there is a lot of congestion and electric buses is not something which basically, you know, feasible alternative, the conventional fuel buses or in hybrid buses will be used. So this is what my advice to Indian cities is also that while they finalize the electric bus, you know, it is not that the whole city bus network to be changed to electric bus in one single stage you need a phased approach wherein in the phase one you need to identify certain routes where electric buses would be kind of used preferably on a dedicated corridor if not then some bus priority measures also need to be given you know so that these buses will have a competing speed compared to the comparative mode because if some you know patronage need to increase there should be some modal shift from the existing either car or two wheeler to these buses. So if the buses are running at 10 km per hour, then perhaps the private vehicle is also running around 12, 15 km per hour kind of range. So then competing mostly is also running. So you don't need to work on the speed, but yes, definitely electric buses is, doesn't seem to be a good alternative on such congested road network. This is what we found in this city. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, my second question is that uh, in your contractual framework, you were <clears throat> talking about that one of your condition is that uh, uh, cost operation and maintenance cost of these proposed electric bus contract 
should not be more than 75 percent of your existing onm buses so uh, our initial trends of indian cities said that post subsidy I mean almost 40 45 percent of the capital subsidy we are getting the per kilometer cost at par uh, electric buses cost post subsidy at par with the our diesel bus operation so uh, i would say uh, this looks like a, a very uh, ambitious expectation uh, so from where did you arrive all uh, this figure and how confident are you to achieve this huh, if you look at it the payment to the private operator is basically comprising of two payment one is the cost for the buses so on top of the o and m cost the operator will also get the leasing cost of the buses so the o and m cost when i say 75% it is only the operations and maintenance cost of the electric buses compared to the operations and maintenance cost of the conventional buses which the authority right now so we have not loaded the capital cost while arriving out the 75% number okay 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 sorry okay so uh, this is from my side if uh, rahul we have another question so we can post yeah i have a question for uh, hemi uh, hemi i think in your earlier slide of talking about emt you also talked about uh, electric bikes uh, being supported by emt and uh, in uh, shailendra presentation you also talked about creating charging infrastructure for almost similar 2000 numbers of uh, electric cars so you have a point of view like uh, how this other para transit modes be the two wheeler three wheeler and four wheeler also needs to be uh, 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 integrated with electric buses for better adoption and what trends you are seeing in uh, europe uh, around it hemi yeah thank thanks for for the question uh, basically we have to distinguish we may make it make a dis distinction between uh, two two wheeler vehicles um, electric bikes and electric mopeds and um, electric cars or, uh, or buses, electric buses, because the infrastructure is very different and the needs are very different. And so in the, in the case of electric bikes, the, the example that, you've, uh, that I've mentioned of Madrid, uh, they, they already have uh, more than 200 stations where you can charge the, the, the electric bike directly when, when, it, is not, uh, when it, it is not being used. So this is a fixed in infrastructure, but it's, and this is only useful for these vehicles. So if you want to, with this infrastructure, you cannot create synergies with electric cars. Um, so they, they are, you have to balance um, the, the, the infrastructure in the city in order to give the opportunity to to charge uh, electric cars in in your city both from from uh, private uh, private citizens or and and also from um, shared uh, electric shared fleets so so that you can uh foster the the adoption of e-mobility so um it has to be approached case by case because if you are talking about uh, installing new infrastructure uh, you have to take in, into account how your your city physically is. It's it's different. Um, the the approach would be different in terms of having a, a um, an old European city with narrow streets and a, a large city center, and or, or to have a new um, new planned um, city in uh, I don't know in China or uh, uh, anywhere else. So I think in, in this case, that will be the, the sensible way to approach it. And uh, one interesting question, probably last, uh, uh, Shailendra, like uh, you brought a point that uh, project preparation before procurement should be at least a year. Can you kind of quickly tell like what kind of detailing information should the document in India, it only talks about that we need 100 e-buses doing this much of range and this thing but it does not give a holistic plan like okay what routes these buses will be running exactly so that the operator has more idea about the road congestion those traffic detailing and other things to ensure that they really get their configurations right so uh, what 
level of detailing you think uh, uh, should be uh, actually done as a feasibility study by the stu and then communicated as part of the rfp document of the holistic planning to actually get more rational beds and more uh, stronger participation yeah thanks rahul it's a very good question because before launching this project we had a market sensitization workshop which was conducted wherein this question was asked because this project is being implemented under a public private partnership basis rather than ppps if you are outrightly buying the buses you, perhaps you may not need you know so much of time but since this is a ppp project so you need a well conceived you know detailing so that which would enable the bidders to bid for the project because if you are not giving that information to the bidder bidder will consider it as a risk and the cost will be on to authority the project will become expensive so in the market sensitization workshop we took a feedback from the industry that what level of detailing you would need before bidding out this project so what we kind of you know agree with the industry that some sort of concept level detailing wherein you identify the route the location of depot the location of charging infrastructure the specification of the buses specification of batteries and other technical specification related to the dedicated corridor design concept level if you give it to them which basically help them to cost for the project because ultimately the private sector bidder is costing for your project so all sort of detail which would help him to cost the project should be given not really the detail which he need for the implementation because the detail which in implementation we have kept it aside as the role for the private sector so the detailed design to be done by the private sector which would help him to implement the project but to cost the project what detail he needs has been provided okay so that is interesting uh, everyone thank you very much i think we have uh, gone already 7 minutes over uh, our time uh that i think i must first of all thank uh, all our speakers uh, they have been really fantastic very very open and transparent in really sharing the real numbers uh, and making it useful for all of us uh, i myself have learned a lot uh, during this discussion so thank you shailendra hemi and rafael uh, and we hope to engage you further in our uh, uh, continued discussions our next topic and third webinar is planned on 7th may uh, that will be focused on e buses operations and charging uh, and we will be going deeper dive into e bus and chargers planning scheduling and fleet monitoring so in this e mobilox series we are opening layer by layer uh, and uh, diving much deeper into all aspects of electric buses so we hope to uh, continue making and adding uh, for being partner on inovilog series thank you everyone yeah rahul before we push out i have a suggestion you know so thanks for the audience and thanks for giz on the screen i see some 45 questions so what i would suggest if you can circulate these questions to the speaker and we'll try to address you know how best we can address these questions to the participant and then you circulate these as the no uh, along with the presentation to all these participants so that everyone get a clarity about what they ask because of time limitation we were not able to address all the questions that is very kind of you uh, shailendra we will uh, uh, do this and uh, share those questions uh, together with the recording uh, uh, on our uh, uh, website as well thank you so much thank, thank you so much, much. Yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you so much.